Number one pick in franchise history, Dr. Barber. Yet you have the greatest chance of landing that top pick today. Are there more nerves or excitement as we await the results? Well, like you said, we have never had the first pick, yet we've had winning seasons. We've even won a championship, so we know what to do. So we're not nervous, but we sure are hopeful, and we think it's time for us to win. I love the confidence. Got to love it. Speaking of confidence, we've got Renee Montgomery in the building, part of the ownership group of the Atlanta Dream, also serving as the vice president of the organization. Renee, your team will have arguably the busiest offseason between free agency and the draft with only five players under contract. What's the off-season mantra for the dream? Well, what up, LaChina? Hey. Miss Peck, what up with y'all? Our mantra is just going to be build culture. We want to just start with culture. We have Tanisha Wright as our head coach, and we're excited. And I asked her, and she was like, look, we can work with one through four. We're building pieces, and we're starting that culture with the Atlanta Dream. So we're excited. I love it. All about the culture. You I want that number one. Sorry. We, we know you want that number one. Uh, next up, Natasha Cloud, WNBA champion with the Washington Mystics, here representing as an active player, which is rare at our draft lottery. Tosh, I have to ask, what does it mean for you to get that call to be here today to represent your team? What's up with China? Uh, it means everything. Y'all know I've been in D.C. my whole career, eight years going strong, um, and it's my second home. So I'm really honored to be here to represent our team and to bring us some luck and get this number one pick. I don't know what, what Renee was just talking about, okay. but it, come on now. Come on, China with the DMV. Hey, DMV <laughs> is in the building, and I'll just say this. If things go well in free agency for the Mystics, y'all are going to be loaded if you get that number one pick as well. So we will have to see. Uh, we also have with us Vicki Johnson, head coach of the Dallas Wings. Vicki, last year it was your team sitting pretty heading into the draft with three of the top five picks, including number one overall. Feeling any pressure to follow that up? Now I'm feeling pretty lucky today, you know, so not a lot of pressure. Uh, we're going to just let the ball fall where they may, uh, but I just want to let it be known that we that I have been a part of the last four out of five number one draft picks. Put the so let's go, Dallas. Day out there. Put the best <laughs> out there. Absolutely, just drop the mic or drop the pin, whatever you got. There you have it, all four teams that are awaiting the big moment to find out if they will get the number one to change tonight. Bethany Donovan, it's time. Take us away. Thank you, LaChina, and good luck to all four teams. The fourth pick in the 2022 WNBA Draft, presented by State Farm, goes to the Dallas Wings. Dallas Wings had three of the top five picks in the 2021 WNBA Draft, including number one overall, Picking third will be Ooh. the Atlanta Dream. Ooh. Ooh. The Atlanta Dream has now oh, had three good. top four overall picks in the last three years. Prior to that, they had only had Billion. one top four overall pick, and that was Angel McCautry at number one in 2009. Oh, yes. I know, I really when we won it. <laughs> Down to the final two teams vying for the top pick. The second pick goes to The Indiana Fever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Which Are means the number me? one pick in the 2022 draft presented by State Farm goes to Damn. the wow. Washington Mystics. I told y'all it was a good luck time this year. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Congratulations you. to the Washington Mystics. <laughs> Natasha on cloud nine. You, as she should you be. know it, okay? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Just thank to recap you. the top four picks four for Dallas Wings, three for the Atlanta Dream, two, the Indiana Fever, and one, the Washington Mystics. Yes. Okay. My goodness, Natasha, yeah. you have been good luck for your team. I mean, when I think about your roster, and obviously free agency and a lot of things still have to happen, you guys are loaded. What could this number one pick add to what you already have to complement your system? Absolutely. I think you said it best. We have, we have our core. We have a really good squad back in D.C., but we need some puzzle pieces added to it. And so this number one pick is going to be all the difference in making another championship run for D.C. How happy do you think this is going to make Mike Tebow? What? I was the same. Coach, I told you. He said, what did you bring as a good luck charm? I said, myself. <laughs> but well, we, no, I know he's excited. From what I understand, we actually have Coach Tebow with us. 
I, oh. I'm trying to figure out if that smile is big enough right now, Coach. I need to see some teeth. I told you, Coach. Uh, wow, just <laughs> unbelievable. So you guys get the number one pick. And you, you've done this before. You selected Tina Charles during your time in Connecticut. What is the process between now and, and April in figuring out what exactly is the best fit for your team? Well, I think the first thing is that, um, you know, we've been trying when, when you're looking and knowing you're going to have a top four pick, selecting, uh, you know, your top eight to ten prospects for that pick and whittling it down as you go. This actually gives us a lot of clarity now, but we've been studying, you know, very carefully eight to ten players and um you know i don't know who will pick um we're open to anything right now uh, i think the biggest thing is that you know you have to pick the best player uh we have a good solid core group with natasha and elena ariel atkins and alicia clark and so you know we have free agency in the draft but this is uh this is a huge moment for us because uh i remember 10 years ago sitting and watching Sheila Johnson uh, face when I was still uh, not with the team uh, when the team had the best odds and she was sitting there so sad uh, when they got the fourth pick in the three to C draft so this is like this is a changer for us and coach uh, you mentioned Elena Deladon how much will her status uh, really weigh on the decision of what you do with that first pick I don't know that it will. First of all, Elena is making great progress right now in the offseason, so that's huge for us. Uh, Alicia Clark's making progress. I think when you have the first pick, uh, unless there's a really extenuating circumstance, you have to keep going, go and decide, you know, who's the best player that's going to make a contribution for a long term, you know, eight to ten years. And I don't think you can pigeonhole it just by a position or somebody that necessarily plays Elena's position, although there are several of those in this draft. I think you have to take who you think is going to be a great player for a long period in the, in the league and start with that premise first. 